Welcome back. You're listening to You Would Think, the Philadelphia Flyers podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Collington, and joining me as usual, Mr. Kevin Durso. How are you, buddy? Doing well. How are you? Uh, you know, it's it's been a week, but here we are. Um, we are back. We are a week closer to hockey, and that's really the most important thing. We did have a couple of Flyers rookie games to talk about. We have some rookie camp, a little bit of a training camp preview. It's it's a little bit of a transitional show as we get towards the season here. As we do, make sure to follow us on all our social media, sportstalkphilly.com. Kevin is at Kevin underscore Durso. Find us everywhere you find your podcast, including sportstalkphilly.com. So, uh, all right, diving right into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rookie game. Uh, yep. There were two of there were two of them. Yes. Uh, the first one drew a bigger crowd in house, and I assume a bigger crowd watching online. Sure, because for a featured, very specific, yeah, for it a specific featured reason. the debut of Matt Vaynichkov in a Philadelphia Flyers uniform in game action. Yes. It now it's a rookie game, of course, but it's game action. It is. Um, obviously, we're going to dive into it. We're going to break it down a little bit here, but like just overall on the whole. Mm-hmm. What was it? What was that? I think he looked pretty good. No, I, he did look pretty good. <laughs> it cut for a second when you tried to do the, okay, uh, okay. When, you, when you tried I, to go ASMR on. <laughs> <laughs> I think he looked pretty good. He did look um, pretty good. He uh, he was pretty darn close to the best player on the ice, if not. And the best. just to hit the caveats that we'll hear about if we don't hit him. Yes, of course, he should look like the best player on the ice. Well, exactly. It was a rookie game. It was not an NHL competition for the most part. Let's be honest. But again, you still want him to look good, right? That's his first sure. game on that North American ice surface. Well, and I th- I think it has to do with it depends on what you're looking for, right? Like, no, this wasn't, you know, this wasn't the Connor Bedard rookie game that was like, what do you have? Three goals, two assists when he played in a rookie game. I don't or even something. remember, but it was like, crazy. Something stupid, right? Like some ridiculous kind of numbers or whatever. And these were way more competitive games. I, in fact, both of them went overtime. Yep. So like. Which I'm like, sure everyone loved. I, oh yeah, especially, well, yeah. especially nobody, that shootout. Nobody loves anything more than I almost said August because it sure feels like it sometimes. But an early September shootout. Yeah, man. In a game that features maximum two to three players that are going to make an NHL roster. Probably. I mean, I I can't think of anybody on the Rangers side that really jumped off the page. Edstrom's good. Adam yeah. Edstrom is very good. He's got a shot. Uh, I couldn't really find any names. Like sometimes you see names like last, I believe last year, right? One last year, Matt Rempe was on the roster for these. Yeah, he was. Like, he fought. Right. Wisdom, he's able I believe. To, um, I can't remember if it was with at one point in time. Some, I'm pretty sure he fought Dave Wisdom. Yeah, it might have been. He fought um, somebody. But anyway, like you. Can, yes, there are players who you can find. Those things. And Mishkov, of course, is making a roster like it's pretty. Yes. There's no secrecy here. Like every other player he's, I could possibly talk about from this game is well you know we're not going to close the door and we want them to believe they can but well and i, they're I probably a, not and i think there's a couple of guys that we'll talk about as we move there's forward. definitely at least uh, there's well there's at least one i know we're going to talk about that is getting that kind of conversation but i'd like there's a couple people that i'd like to see maybe not get a full nine game tryout in the in the show but at least get a game or two and assuming they have a strong camp of course you know right well um, and that's why i set my expectations on let's let's start with the first step of the whole process anyway get, in, get into at least one preseason game maybe more and we can talk then you know hey you're playing now you're playing somebody else Th- these guys aren't out like they're out to do the same thing to you they're yeah. trying to make an impression this is not scrimmaging in in camp with your teammates right. where it's like also don't hurt anybody like we're not trying to have injuries either and right, and for were, what it yeah and we'll, the Rangers so. the Rangers prospects were out there to murder. <laughs> well, here's and here's the thing, and that was one of the parts that was most impressive about Mishkov's game was that, and this is what I mean by it depends on what you were looking for because yeah, you got the skill, the skill was there, but oh, the hands on the goal alone, we could sure, and we're gonna get minutes. to the goal and all that yep. stuff. We we're getting to it, but I thought what was impressive is that you know several times he's going into dirty areas and he's not backing down from anything, and I. And I've noted like like I saw a picture of him somewhere like probably like like you see like one of these p- online posts. Yeah. And and and, they, and he's not wearing gear. It's not meant to be like a look. He's on the ice kind of post. It's just a casual post. Right. But I'm looking at him like, well, his legs are pretty thick and he's and his shoulders look pretty thick and he's 19. He looks like he can hand like from just a strictly strictly a size perspective, even though he's not the tallest guy. No, he's. He's got some he, good size to him for like 
yep. in what looks like muscle. He, well, and he's in the process of filling out. Like you mentioned, he's 19 mm-hmm. years old. He, you know, he's in the process of filling out physically. He's, you know, moving countries. You know, obviously things are going to mm-hmm. be a little bit different. I assume the Flyers have him on some sort of nutritional plan already. Well, he uh, seems like a gym rat too. Probably to bulk and help him gain weight and provide him with enough protein to make sure. those gym sessions effective. Um, yeah, he looks. Yeah. The one, so, of, one of one of the knocks on him was that not that he got pushed around, but he, he was a little tiny bit undersized, and that playing against men sometimes he looked a little bit physically immature, and it yeah. seems like that's coming along in giant steps. It could be uh, yeah. like it is rook it is still rookie of camp. Course. That's one of the yeah. first caveats there. Yeah, yeah the right twenty, 20 no, pounds the, of muscle or whatever he's well, added that that doesn't have anything well, to do with rookie camp. That boy's just big. Well, no, I, oh, I'm not talking about that. And that's I'm what I'm talking about is is that the Rangers roster had a lot of taller players, stronger players. Like, yes, it was built for size, no question about it. And they. That that's a good test for him early on, but I need like now we're gonna see veteran camp and preseason games. This is gonna be kind of like they that experience where you see how he looks against probably sure. you know much more guys who are much more of an equivalent of what what he was seeing in the KHL, right? right. Like well, and and another thing to dr- just kind of draw a parallel to is that his teammates will also be a little bit bigger, maybe be able to clear a little bit more space sure. for him. So, so that does come up in kind of a commensurate level. Um, but yeah, him, I think it will be a little bit more of a step towards what he's comfortable with because he's been playing against men for, you know, the last several years oh, yeah. in, in the KHL system. Sure. And that's the thing, right? Like you, he, he's going to be better prepared because of that. Absolutely. The question becomes whether or not, you know, how quickly does this this become what it is like? And and like, so we might as well get to this part of the game because like it. it did it feel not like it was a little destined to happen in a way? Like every time he hopped on the ice anyway, there was a buzz. You were always looking for him. And then, you know, next thing you know, he's out in the situation and, and you get that situation, by the way, you get a situation where you want to see skill come through a little more because it's a five on three for a long time. It's a five on three yep. for what a minute 58, I think is what it was. Cause, they, Cause it was, it was a hand on the puck in the face off violation, violation, basically yep. two seconds into a power play. So now you've get all got all this ice available to you and it's going to be a power play unit with pretty much your top rookie guys out there. So it wasn't just Mishkov. It was Jet Lashenko's who's out there. Emil Andre's out there. Um, who's the other one I'm forgetting at this point? One it's, it's, it's the guy. It's the guy I really want to talk about. If you're talking about the D man who was out there, well, Emil Andre's out was out there. Is there another one? Oh, I'm okay, missing? okay. Oh no, I must have been thinking about the other unit. Okay, okay, okay. Um, because I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of who the other two would have been. Because there again, it was more on the veterans. side. Massimo Rizzo was one of them, and he okay. had a big goal Did... later in this game as well, um, okay. the Friday game. But yeah, so and and honestly, as the play developed. I thought that Lashenko should have shot the puck. He's got it in the slot. He looks like he's wide open. Let her rip, kid. You know, like you're in that you're in that bumper spot. You're you're right you're right where you want to be. Let it let it go. But instead, you know, and he's known to do this. He's a center, and he's gonna look for the pass sometimes. So he goes down low to the to the I, doorstep. I watched Claude Giroux play on this team. Yeah. So well, he goes so he goes down low, and there's Mishkov, and Mishkov does not have a ton of space to work with there. You you know to no. make that move and then outweigh on, on the, goalie, the goal line essentially, right, and outweigh the goalie to go around him and then tuck it, and 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 like somehow or other, like you couldn't really on the video from the broadcast angle, you couldn't really see the puck because it's the opposite side and the, and the goalie sprawled out and the goalie sprawling out already. But somehow or other you could like tell he's got it under control, right? Like this isn't, this isn't the goalie dove out and is on top of it. And he's got to try to dig it. This isn't a scramble. Right. Look at the hands moving. He's still got it. And he's going to do what I think he's going to do. Right. Like, and, and, and it, look, you're watching it on a stream. This isn't, you know, typically this isn't your national game on ESPN or something like that, where the cameras are great. Okay. Right. But you could see the puck over the line without, you know, before it's fished out of there. Cause it doesn't, it's not like he buries it. It's in and out. Like someone tries to keep it out. You could see it was in and you over knew the line, baby. And you knew whose goal it was. And, and you know what I love? And he too, celebrated like, like Oh, it I too. know. Oh, maybe. Okay. Wait a minute. Maybe you are right about the other D man on it then. Cause I just remembered who else was on the power play unit. Cause he had the biggest grin on his face when this happened. It was Oliver a man, Pong. 
I was going to say, a man who I would like to see play an NHL game or two, assuming the next yeah, couple weeks we'll go see. well. Just, just a couple. I, I, so here's the thing. My, my overall mentality towards draft plus two players in the CHL, they don't really need to be there for the most part. Like, uh, not first round picks. Obviously, some of your later guys take a little bit longer to develop. But as far as I'm concerned, if you go back to junior once, that's fine. Second time, I don't necessarily know if you need to. Probably. I hear where you're coming from. That's just me. And well, and by that, I mean, I don't think there's any harm in giving him a couple of games, giving him a little bit of a taste of the NHL. Let him let him go on that four game Western Canada swing with you. You're probably going to bring an extra defenseman anyway, because you're in Western Canada. You might as well let it be the kid. You know, drop them off in London on your way back. <laughs> I like your, I mean, I, I understand your thing. That's, I mean, that's not exactly where they're going to be. Uh, where is it not the Western Canada trip to start? I thought it was. No, it, no, no, no. I'm saying London is oh, not oh, exactly oh. Western Canada. Well, no, but isn't the, isn't the third or fourth game no, kind of working its way back here? No, not at all. They're, oh, sorry. they're all at the whole, all the whole NHL app oh, updated. So I don't know where anything is. Okay. <laughs> okay, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Seattle. Yeah, then you fly home. You fly home. You, yeah, know, you stop yeah, in London direct, on the Friday. It's a direct flight, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. Uh, but anyway, you get what I'm saying. Is I I think obviously you have to see how camp goes, and I'm I'm not you know giving him a roster spot. Based sure, on his he's, performance. Well, in he's two one of the rookie two. games at a rookie camp. He's one of the two we're going to talk about probably extensively when it comes to that because they were the two yeah. that were mentioned by name by Danny Briere on Tuesday right. about this. So, but let's get back to let's get back to the rest of this rookie game yes. and more yes. on Mishkov and things like because because this was just the icing on the cake by the way that Mishkov scores a goal in the game. He's playing well already. He made. From the point that the goal was scored, now we're back to five on five at this point for some of this. He made right. at least two passes I saw that were no look. Go to just go to the right spot. I sure hope you're thinking ahead of me because I'm thinking this, and you better go. And he made re- like just two really brilliant high hockey IQ plays right off the bat. And then the third period rolls around, and he tr- and he tries to go full Trevor Zegers on everybody and do the alley oop pass. Over the top yeah, of the it, net, it gets knocked down, but still the, the insane just, confidence. Just having, just, just even having that in your head to try it is crazy. In your Let alone first game on this, right? Ice. You haven't played yet. This is your first legitimate game action in North right. America, and you've been skating under John Tortorella for a week. Well, n- not really, actually, because Tortorella's no, not running the camps yet, so no. we're not there yet, but. We're we're almost there. We're all well, he, he was watching when Mitchkov tried the tried the Michigan and rookie camp. Well, that see, that <laughs> one happened. Yeah, you saw that then. The couple, couple days was, later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. no, because it happened, and and apparently the story because I wasn't there. All the assistant the coaches goes, turned. And everybody started laughing turned and at, looked torts. at torts and and they're just laughing because or or, or or it was the other way around. Torts just looked at everybody else because they know how he feels about that, and everyone's just la- laughing Busting at him. Because at like it. yeah, so yeah, so. Obvi- but either way, Obvi- the, the confidence Mitch Kav is showing early on is sure. insane. Well, I, I also loved the comments that I – a couple comments that I saw on, on Twitter and things like that after he didn't score in the shootout, which was just saving it all for when it matters, like not trying to show right. off his – we're not trying to dive into the playbook just yet. He's not showing saving, what he's Saving yet. the game film. Right. We're keeping secrets for right now. We're not trying to expose anything first game, you know. So he didn't do anything like super special is the point, right? Right. Exactly. But, but nonetheless, okay. you know, nonetheless, um, never show your whole hand. Right. So let's go back to the rookie game and rookie camp stuff for a minute as a whole. So um, maybe I'll highlight, I'll start by highlighting some of the, you know, here's what the goal scores were of these two games other than Mishkov, of course. Yeah, and then, and then we can kind of go back to the conversation we had on last week's show about some of the guys toward the end. We were talking about some of the guys we were looking forward to seeing yes. and get into what we thought. Cause there's a, well, let's put it this way. There's a name that I didn't say that you said that I think has drawn a lot of attention as well, and I want to bring him up when it comes time. Yes, so, sir. I already uh, know who you're talking about. Well, I might bring him up right away because it's his shot that gets deflected on the first goal. So well, I don't know goal, if, if you keep if you keep dodging his name, it might get a little fishy. Uh, it could be. Well, we'll see. Anyway, so the first goal that the Flyer scored was Alexi Gendron, who I I really think is going to be a guy worth watching this year in the AHL. He kind of didn't get. 
you know, he tried at the AHL level last year. They ended up sending him back to juniors for a bit too, because he was eligible for that. It, it was kind of weird circumstances. Like he was able, you know, because he was of age to be able to play in the AHL, but also had a year of eligibility left for juniors. So now he's going full AHL at this point. Right. And full season I, as a professional. I, I like his skill and I like his speed. And I'm really curious. I mean, and this is a, this is one of those guys you take a flyer on. Like, sure. No he was a seventh thinking. round pick. You just, but he's a seventh round pick. You just, Look, if, if anything, you're, if anything happened, at that point, a little you're, bit. you're happy if the guy's knocking on the door at the AHL level, let alone sure. make it. especially with his prime development years being COVID years. Sure. Seventh uh, round. Well, that, sometimes that can contribute to it. We've talked about that with other teams before, like like oh, yeah. like Wyatt Johnston's a good example. Like that that draft year, nobody had anything on anybody, and it's like, oh, that's how the guy goes 23rd well, or whatever. The, the draft isn't gonna settle down for another three or four years until kids start aging out of just COVID development phases. Right. So, yeah. So anyway, but, but by the way, so he, he deflects in the shot. The shot was Spencer Gill, by the way, who he said third round pick this year. Yep. You know, or no, like a brick house. I'm sorry. Second. He was a second round pick this year. They didn't have an absolute house. It was late second. That's why I'm getting confused. It was late second, but yes, he's oh tall. Definitely. You know, here's the thing though. Not, not overly physical, like complete wrecking ball all the time. Picked his spots with the physicality. Intelligent good, with it. Really good skater. Like could move pretty well. For his size, incredible sure. skater. For sure. And he made a, pl- and made a that. play that – so Mishkov had the second goal. So now let's get to the third goal of this first game because he gets an uncredited assist, Spencer Gill does, for breaking up a play at the other end that looks like a sure empty net goal in the final incredible, second. Incredible, incredible. And they go back does. down the other end. And Massimo Rizzo is the one who ends up getting the goal. Um, it wasn't quite Patrick Stefan, but it was pretty good. Right. It wasn't quite that. <laughs> um, Rizzo gets the goal on a rebound. The two defensemen, again, it was Andre and Bonk who were kind of swapping back and forth. I think Bonk's the one who took the shot Okay. in that case. But they're going, you know, they're, they're, they're rotating out, you know, trying to keep some movement going because it's, it's a six on five. It's set up, you know, you're trying to do kind of that overloaded power play look and keep some things moving. And yeah, so they get the game tied and that means like, and right away, and I was excited about it. Cause I'm like, you're getting three on three with Mishkov right yeah. away. Like you thought the five on three presented a lot of space to do some stuff. And he's made some plays at five on five that are like, Oh wow. He's already looked fancy. Doing. Right. Now we're going three on three. But I also think, I do think there was an element that by the end of the game, they double shifted, shifted him in the third period. Well, I was going to say he played most of the last two minutes because they're trying to come back. Well, he wasn't on the ice when the, when the game was tied. No, but he had been, but he had been on the ice the rest of that. For, yeah. He'd been on the ice for probably half of the third period. A long, a he was out there time. constantly. And he was running him out. Right. Well, because I think deep down, they knew it was the only chance that he was going to play that weekend. Well, so Lappy knows it's the only chance he's going to get to coach him. So he might yeah, as well just, double just, just run that horse. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, 39, yeah. 39, yeah. 39. But either way, um, th- so they get the game tied. I think that by the time overtime rolled around, he was a little tired and it sure. showed a little bit. I think the burst was a little bit gone. They had chances. I think I think I saw by the end of the thing, they took like seven shots in overtime. Yeah, they were definitely. And it wasn't just him. Like, I, I shouldn't say it wasn't just him and his line is what I mean by that. Like they rolled out more than just him and got got scoring chances, got sure. you know, got possession time, all the stuff that you want to see in three on three. Yeah. And and ultimately it goes on to the shootout. They only the Rangers only scored one goal and that was that, you know, th- that's all that was needed. Um, then you, then we shift to Saturday and Saturday was an even more low scoring game than that. It was a three, two game in overtime. Uh, the flyers actually took a two, nothing lead in the game. Um, I got to go back and look at my recap actually for the first, I know who scored the second goal. The second goal was Sawyer boy, uh, Bolton, okay. who most people are going to be out there listening be like who, but he had a very impressionable couple of games because he was physical. And he was yes. he was very much in the mix of those scrums, things like that. So he had a very eventful weekend. Yeah, and he's, he's, Spencer Bolton's the kind of guy who's play, probably playing for like an ECHL job. Yeah, but, could be, yeah. could be, could be back end of uh, the Phantoms lineup. Could be a bottom six Sh- Phantom. Sure, but it's possible. I don't even. Does he even have an AHL deal? 
Um, that's a good question. I can look that part up. I, for you. Say, I, at, uh, I got the max. First. I'm willing to bet I he's two way ECHLA. I got home. the uh, I got the first goal scorer by the way because it's a power play goal. Mateo Man. Hmm. Defenseman. Not, okay. Yeah. Defenseman yeah, who he, snuck in from the Mateo blue line. Man who, who looked pretty mobile in that game. Who looked pretty decent. I he stood out as one of the one of the more mobile offensive defensemen. He's an interesting in that game. He's an interesting one though because now he didn't get a chance to really participate in camps last year. He tri- like he got into a couple of drills and then got hurt. And but and basically okay. after that was, the, you know, before everybody else gets on the ice, like super early in the morning, he's out there just skating around for a little bit, and then that's going to be the end of that. So, not it, it that doesn't allow you to look like, at him, right? But that does that doesn't allow you a whole lot of time to like kind of establish, um what a guy can do it's and, hard to make a good impression on the on management yeah kind of yeah and so let's see so you wanted to know about who were we talking about um bolton right bolton's got yeah. an ahl contract he does okay yeah he's an ahl contract guy okay. um he so he'll probably is, make the, the he'll probably make the phantoms <laughs> take a while get he so he played he played in the nahl and the ohl last year take a wild guess which team he played on was it london yep <laughs> Very, I mean, and here, so ready for this stat line though. He played for London, forty games, three goals, two assists for five points, and sixty-three penalty minutes. Well, sure, he's <laughs> probably on their third pair. Well, he's not a defenseman. This is a forward. Oh, well, he's probably probably in their bottom six then. I would say so. I mean, certainly right. be, last last year, certainly behind Denver Barkey, who unfortunately did not play at all during the course of this thing because he's been overcoming a bit of an illness and. He had mono recently. Uh, mono, right? Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So they're just being. He apparently lost a bunch of weight. Now he's trying to gain gain it back. So that was a little disappointing because I was really looking forward. Be unfortunate, to like, because well, because think about all the stuff we talked about with first, with like first power play and overtime and things like that. Oh, he would have been out there he for sure been, in those situations. He would have. He would have gotten a ton of ice time. Well, and I would have loved to have seen it in the, uh, the um, in break. the second. No, in the second game. Oh, okay. Because in the second game. I got to imagine he would have like, like it depends on how they would have wanted to use Barky. If they would have used him as a winger and put him on the opposite wing of Mishkov with Lashenko, holy smokes, what a line that sounds like. That's a line. But if they viewed yeah. him as a center, he probably would have been the second guy behind Lashenko, and that would have been. And he's he's coming in when Mishkov comes off the ice, right? Right, and that would have given you another layer to it that you know things like that. But either way, um, and then the overtime, the overtime winner in that game. Fun, you know, fun little trio out there for you for this one because every one of them touched the puck at some point in this thing because Lashenko got it in deep, got it behind the net, helps work it out to the front of the net where um where Emil Andre is. He's got a lot of space. He shows some patience, waits it out, gets it over to the side of the net, and there's Samu Tuamala, who unfortunately, since scoring that goal, has not been able to practice. He's been day to day, he's been a little banged up, but he had he was he was decent for some of these games. Ian LaPerriere talked about it, and maybe this is because he was a phantom last year, talked about it a little more like there's more to give. So like if you're looking for a guy going into camp that you thought might make some noise, kind of pump the brakes, there was a lot more to be desired from a player like that versus these guys who came in fresh out of being drafted or whatever, you know. So but there were I, your goal scores. Let's talk about some guys that we like. Yeah. Um as previously mentioned, I, I mentioned on last week's show that I was looking forward to watching Spencer Gill play, and I think it was it was a, a lot of fun watching him play hockey. I I expect him to take a couple years in the AHL to really find sure. his stride as a professional. But when if he does, when he does, he's the kind of guy who comes up at you know twenty three, twenty four, sounds about right, sli- yeah. and just slides right into like your second pair. Possibly, yeah, and and obviously it depends on what the team looks like at that point. But he's if, gonna be a fun. He's gonna be a fun prospect. You're right. And and I know we played what if with Sam Moran for ten years, and obviously that's a factor whenever you talk about a big guy like this, just because maintenance can be an issue. But he's not Sam Moran, <laughs> and as much as the comparisons will, you know, lead to. I don't part, believe he has any real significant injury history. Well, and part of the problem with even ju- drawing that comparison right now is, you know, Sam Moran got through a junior career and into the AHL and eventually into the NHL for a little bit. Like I know it never lasted because of that injury history and 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 oh, constant so depressing. Yeah. And I know that. But what I'm getting at is is that 
you, you have a lot of, like Moran's career lasted a long time to get to that point because you got to go through all the years. And every time you have one of those significant injuries, you've got to work your way back from it first before you can keep playing and basically pick up where sure. you left off. Like you have to sure. try half, half the time he would rehab for 10 months and then re-injure it and start the whole process over. Right. But he still was able to have a junior career, an AHL career, and have yeah. to work his way to that point. You know, maybe what you're hoping for here is that one, like you said, with less injury, if he's not a, a, as injury prone. Right. Knock you, on wood. Right. You go out there and you have a situation where his development goes a little faster because he's advancing faster because he doesn't sure. have to keep rehabbing. Something well, he's just taking, time. he's taking more reps for actually gaining knowledge and fewer reps for getting healthy. Sure. Right. And, and so, and we'll see, right? Like it's too early to tell with somebody like that. Um, sure. I'll bring up but a couple... early on from what I've seen. Right. I really liked, yeah. let's stick with the blue line for a second. And I'll do this before we get to bonk. Cause I know you want to talk about bonk. I had mentioned Hunter McDonald, who definitely ha- was, was a standout. He definitely turned heads too. Be- well, and, be- and there's a main reason McDonald and Andre both because they were both phantoms for a time looked like they actually had pro experience, you know, sure. like those guys more than anything on the blue line were the guys that you look at and you're like, oh, yeah, OK, they, you know, and I'm not taking away from like Helga Grand's play, too. And he's been a pro like that's not like it's not like he's not right. Of course, I, I just felt like I heard McDonald's name constantly. I mean, it seemed yeah. like you were he was he was noticeable, you know. He looks he's, like he's ready to step right into the AHL and play like top AHL minutes. I wouldn't be shocked at that at all. That's a great and like, point. and depending on what happens with the NHL roster, if you're looking for a call up who's actually going to play due to injury, like God forbid someone's out three or four weeks and you need someone to come in and actually like play, yeah, fourth, fifth, sixth type of guy minutes, McDonald, as long as he looks good in that AHL time. Is I think a pretty solid candidate. If he continues on, if he continues on the right path, yes, Be- and especially for how many times they've talked about him. Sure, I agree with that. Right, and um, when, the, when a guy is that size and shows the skill he has shown, like you're going to get opportunities. Well, and I, I think you're on to something with the how the AHL play looks because even with all the talk about McDonald and watching him play this weekend. Emil Andre is the one who's closer to the NHL right now, based sure. on my eyes. But once you start playing some games and seeing some things, it might be the other way around when the time comes. Well, and I feel like Andre is a little more offensively gifted than McDonald is. He and definitely is. Sure. It's it's easier to show up at camp and look good offensively. I feel like it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of reps and a little bit of kind of getting your body back in that game rhythm to really tighten up your defensive game. That's why the first three weeks of the NHL season, we always get, you know, eight to five scores all day, all game long, <laughs> um, you know, but things tighten up as guys get a little more comfortable as guys, you know, get into the rhythm of the season. And I think McDonald is a big candidate to hit a groove and just be an absolute monster for the Phantoms by like, well, that's, that's the other thing we can't gloss over about these rookie games is one. Yes. They're rookie games. So pump the brakes on anything. Uh, sure. They had, they had one on ice day and then played a game. Exactly. Like, like, like these guys are coming have... in out. If they didn't do, you know, off season conditioning, they came in pretty out of shape. Probably. Um, <laughs> and I assume most of them did off season conditioning. Don't get me wrong. Right. And so did, did you want to touch on your feelings about Oliver Bonk? Because you, like you said, you want to see him play. You want to see him. Now I want to see my answer is going to be different than yours. Cause I don't think he's ready personally. Okay. I don't think he's ready. I don't think he is ready to be an NHL defenseman. I don't think he's ready to make an NHL team. Okay. I want him to get a little bit of a taste. I want him to play maybe the first, like I said, that first four game road trip, and maybe he only gets into two of them, but he plays third pair of minutes and second power play with Mitch Kov. That's, Here's- that's all I want. That's all I want. I, I I'm going to, Pull back, not pull back, but like I don't, keep, keep I don't agree. The NHL. Well, I don't agree with that, honestly. Okay. Um, because I, I think maybe, and see, maybe you'll agree with me on this part. I don't. I think maybe that would be an easier option, or at least more of an option, if he wasn't just basically it's juniors or NHL. I. Like Emil Andre got that same exact treatment last year, played a couple of games, was on the roster for I think four, and then was down and nope and didn't come back up for the rest of the year. Right. 
right? Like, and and some of that that that's by merit, like that's by your style of play, because he was sure. right there to be brought back. But my point being that you don't have a way to go back after this with this one. My goal for t- to me anyway, they've got seven preseason games. He got one last year because they really liked his camp, and I don't He's think that's going to get four or five this year. I was going to say three at minimum. Like, okay. you know, it, it definitely at least two. If you can play, here's what I would say. If you can play, let's say, the very first one in Washington on Sunday and then maybe play in the two home games on Thursday and Saturday of that week and then you think about making a decision. I mean, let's put it this way. I'll, I'll tell you what the first part of the equation is right off the bat. Maybe he plays in both the, like both games of the back-to-back on the road. Maybe they do decide to do that. I don't know. I don't think they will because... It's really weird travel. Well, I play They're guys back to back if you don't. Need well, to. no, or... it's not that you you sometimes want to play younger guys back to back. Like Mishkov, see what could, they got. Like Mishkov could. I don't think Mishkov will because okay. they don't. Well, because I don't. Well, for two reasons: one, they don't need to push it like that, and sure. two, you've got three preseason home games where like that's your time. Play them oh, in yeah. what? Like like I would play them in Washington to start because it's like yes, the first game get him out there. You're talking then about Mishkov. Yes, but then right. after that, I'm saying. Home games only, just just because it's a clear draw for your fans. Like, oh, absolutely, the, the building it, will be full, right? Like on top, and and not only that, but you te- typically you tend to play your most veteran heavy lineups anyway at home. So, well, you know, I'll tell you this: as we move through the preseason, if thirty nine's playing, so is Nick Delorier. Period. Probably in those games, yes. I think that's a decision and, you're going to have to make more in the regular season, right? And probably like Garnet Hathaway too. Uh, don't forget Rasmus Ristolainen's back too. Yeah, but he's. I don't know, yeah, man. But, I'm just saying, big guy. I don't. Ex- I don't guy. expect him to jump right into the physicality after okay. the after the the injury and stuff. Uh, but honestly, and regardless, well, honestly, you're going off of sometimes big like bigger bodies and things like that. You can give me Scott Lawton in those games. Scott Lawton would step in and do it in a second. So like, Absolutely. let him be the policeman. I I'm listen. Here. I am fine. I do not think it is the ideal line. Okay. And in the regular season, I don't want it to be the everyday line. But if in the preseason you give me Scott Lawton centering Mitchkov and Delorier, I'm good. <laughs> I Again, don't think just it's in the gonna, preseason. Right. I don't think preseason. it's gonna be that way because they're gonna want to <laughs> see combinations too. Like they gotta know what they're doing on uh October eleventh. Right. But but I get your point. Um yeah, so yeah, it's, it's gonna be fun watching Mitchkov play no, with so, Travis Connectney. I'm telling so, you that much already. Right. So but so so my point was with Bonk was Maybe you even do try like I like I said, the travel is weird for those first two preseason games. One's in Washington and they're taking a bus down after a very quick morning skate for the game group right. at like 10 in the morning. And then the game's at three. So that's like a really interesting travel day to begin with. And then the next day, it's a game in Montreal at seven. And I let's just say maybe this will change because everything with the schedules are subject to change. But the schedule currently has that. There is a skate in the morning first for the game group, and then they go. I guess so. I guess they're I catching a quick a, skate. I well, it will be, but I'm saying I guess they're catching a flight at 11 a.m. to get to Montreal, and then being able to be at the facility maybe by two. Seems weird for the preseason, but I you oh, know what's weird for the preseason is them playing a game in Montreal. I couldn't tell you the last time that happened. Right? Why would you purposely put cross border travel in? Like, what are we doing? Um, I, it doesn't matter like th- this stuff hap- like stuff happens in different places all the time it's just yeah. an interesting destination but well and I, I know sometimes you'll do it you'll do it to s- take some guys see sure. how they are on a road trip see but, how they are on the road but the reason so the reason why I say I want like I wonder if they would play bonk back to back is because there's a scheduled off day for Tuesday the 24th right y- and and Early on in camp, when we got all the information about covering the camp and things like that, they're not doing like anybody we talk to is going to come up to the press room and do for the first few days because let's face it, you got as a matter of fact, I just found out today because there's a lot of construction going on over at the training center. And right. it ju- I just saw a post today from the training center that they are adding a third rink to the facility. That's a big bulk of the construction. Wow. Which I'm sure one part of that is that it opens up more space for like something else to be going on while all of these happen. Cause they basically shut down all operations when the flyers have stuff like right. training camp, both rinks are going to be in use at different points. So there's nothing happening all day, practically. Right. Right. 
um, they could fill three locker rooms with the amount of players they bring into camp. Well, I just had the document up with the. Uh, Oh, it was like it's seventy or eighty guys like, with the training camp. Of- well, uh, it's no, it's not that big. Um, but they okay. have they have thirty two forwards, twenty defensemen. So now we're up over fifty, and okay, so like it's fifty two. It's fifty two, and six goaltenders is fifty eight. Okay, now, it's almost sixty. Okay. Now, there's not now the goaltender thing works itself out because they'll carry two. That right. will work itself out. And most of these will work themselves out. I'm not saying sure. They won't, we, we, but you, you take a look at that roster, and you have a pretty good idea of probably 18 or 19 of the 20 spots on the on the final sure. roster. Exactly, and 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 you're going to do the same with forwards and things like that. Like we're not sitting here talking about, you know, as much as it was fun to talk about some of the rookie game stuff. We're not sitting here talking about Alexi Zendron and. Yeah, right. Mateo, like, Man, Mateo, right, Mateo Man, Mateo Man ain't and, making the roster, and Sawyer Bolton, like those guys, are not making the team more than likely. Right. Now, I like Spencer Gill; he ain't making the roster this year. No, he's going back to juniors, probably. Now, right now, Massimo Rizzo scored a goal this weekend. That's, that's one. That, that's one that might be worth some conversation if yeah. he has a really good camp. If he has a really good camp, he may not. You know, we'll see. I, like, I for, was Rizzo? I forget. Is he a? Was he a college guy? Yes. Okay, this was so the guy is AHL or NHL. Okay. Right. I'm just making sure there wasn't a junior situation. Rizzo, Rizzo was the guy they got from Carolina when they traded. Oh, right, right, they right, were right, supposed right. to get for D'Angelo and then they had to and do And then they ended up getting for free. Stuff. Yeah. And then they had to do some other fun stuff. And then after that, um, right. Then you know, the cats were convented and still got this guy anyway. Right. And it doesn't matter. Like, but whatever. But <laughs> once he finished his college career, which by the way, he won a national championship at Denver last year. Yep. And then, once his college career was over, uh, apparently, see, a lot of people were wondering why didn't he play in the playoffs for the Phantoms last year? And Ian LaPerriere said something about he had an injury, so he hadn't, he didn't even get a chance to really see mm. him skate. Okay. Like, so maybe that was the whole reasoning behind it. So now, you know, like, he's going to have more experience because he's coming in. Like, he didn't come in um, as, like, he's not coming in as some young guy. Right. He's, he just like he just turned twenty three in June, so it almost, it almost feels to me. Remember a couple years ago, um, Justin Bailey when he was on the roster. A little, I know what you're talking about. Like I just get where you're similar, coming from. Like, I could see him being very productive at the AHL level. I can see him if you know should some spots open up at the NHL mm-hmm. level, whether they be at the trade deadline because people got traded away or via injury or however it goes through. I could see him being a name that pops up as a call up. Right. And 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 in, within those rookie games, by the way, Elliot Dainoye is another name. We we, we love that name. Obviously. I love Elliot one of Dainoye. the best names that they've drafted uh, in a while. Um give but, me the destroyer, top five nickname in Flyers. <laughs> the top ten nickname in Flyers history. But but Dainoye is he had a really good weekend, and it seems like he's gonna be another one that they might try to give a long look to. It's right. it's definitely a big year for him. Like I don't think last year he had the best year he could have had, and I think he battled some stuff and things like that. Like his numbers from last year should be on this sheet, so I can pull that up pretty quickly. What was that? Sixty three games, six goals, twenty two points. Like it's not great. Like especially as kind of a second year player, you know, he sure. had been down there before, so he's one to kind of have like. Because the time reason for him to take a step forward. Well, the reason I'm bringing it up too is because I'm looking for like you're looking for guys that you think may keep getting into games later in the preseason, like right. like in Mishkov's case, like we talked about for Mishkov, playing in the home preseason games may be the way to go. Now I don't know if that's going to stick completely because they have a sizable gap between preseason games and it includes a back to back. So hey, listen, I'm not putting it past them to play him in five out of seven. The kid's new; he's got to get some playing time. They're well, going to want to use it. Right. And you want to on ramp him to North American ice to NHL angles to like, it's a different game. Like I know we talk about the KHL being like a pretty decent skill level about the same as the AHL, blah, blah, blah. Stylistically, the games are right. dramatically different. Well, and, they are played and, dramatically differently. And let's be realistic about it. again. If I look at that schedule, he probably plays in the first preseason game because just get him into a game as soon as possible. I would 
be pretty willing to bet that he would play the first home preseason game because much like I think they would handle it just like they handled this where it's like, listen, it's technically two home games in the rookie series, but he's playing the first one because everybody's been waiting to see this kid. He's yeah, got it. We're not going to hold it. Right. If we're not going to. Yeah. Like, don't bury the lead here and say he's playing Saturday. So everybody's got to play the kid first. Play him. Just and play him. So I see him playing the first preseason home game and I see him playing the last preseason home game, which is also the last game of the preseason, because yep. that's kind of like your final roster audition. Sure. Like, well, you and play, you right, play that, pretty that's much who game. you think he's going to play. I was going to say your your final preseason game roster is usually pretty close to your opening night roster. It maybe takes guys like here's like you know who I would take out of the lineup to let another player who's battling get in. I would sit Sean Couturier in a game like that. I would yes. maybe sit it. I would maybe sit a Scott Lawton in a game like that because okay. I don't need to see him or or go a different direction where it's like because because I'd want the younger guy like any of these younger guys maybe maybe a sit Travis Konechny that game because he's it's on quite- the old. Quite frankly, I know you mentioned Sean Couturier. I kind of like to see Sean Couturier play at least three or four, three games. Oh, I don't mean that means. Yeah, I'm not saying that means. Ramp, I'm not but... saying that means he doesn't play preseason games. I'm saying right. for that last Just one, that knowing, last one. No, I understand. That that's the last hurdle to get to the regular season. I think maybe if if you have battles left that you want to see, you're not forcing Couturier to play that preseason game and being like, "Hey, I'm going to put you out there and, and potentially in the line of fire with one preseason game to go." knowing that we're on the cusp of the regular season. I don't need to do that. I don't right. need to, I, I, like I said, with Konechny or Lawton, I don't feel a need to do that either. Like, if you don't know what those guys have by now, then you're not paying attention. I'd want it, like, and it, and, and kind of, it's like, not weird, but it's in a situation like that, like, I was about to say, like, you don't even have to play certain guys like Forrester or something like that, but no, I'd want to see Forrester. Forrester's on the younger side. He should want to play in five of these games. I, yeah. T- uh, Tyson Forrester, Tyson Forrester's probably in your top six this year. Well, we we can we'll kind of let's shift gears. I guess I was gonna say I was gonna, we kind of have Freddie, to. You know there was oh by the way I want to touch one more one more prospect to touch on yeah. to touch on and then we'll go to the rest of the veteran guys the current the more current well roster, because right. Jet Lashenko is a guy who I think we need to talk about for a second because he's talked about making trying to make the team. And a lot of people got really excited after the first game with like, oh, wow. And I'll agree. Listen, I'll agree from the entire weekend. There is a lot more there than I thought with this kid. Like, remember how we felt the day, like at the first, well, I'm trying to remember, did we do, I think, because we didn't do a show for a little while. So I don't think we did a show immediately after he was drafted, but even in group chat, we were kind of like, okay, like hopefully they saw something because like nobody seems to have this kid that high at 13. Right. And it took, two rookie games and there's a lot of people on social media now who are ready to put him into the, the team night line him. Right. right. Yeah. Like, okay. I pumped the brakes a little bit. Cause, and I, I actually, I actually tweeted something about this because I saw, cause I saw part of that conversation happening. So I right. did tweet about it. And basically like I even said, like exactly what I just said. Now there's definitely more there than I thought, which is great. Like I really sure. like that. Um, but it, it leads it gives me a little bit more trust in Danny Briere, right? Because well, we sure. look at this pick and go, mm, I don't know about that. And then immediately we see more than we thought we saw. But I think people are are jumping the gun after rookie games before and, and would change their minds in a second if they saw him getting dominated by veterans. Like put the, like put this kid into a like and I'm gonna use because he's a first name pops in my head, but put this kid in a battle with Rasmus Ristolin and at net front. Right. His performance gets contextualized into a rookie game pretty quickly. Sure, and I and 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 this is the exact words I tweeted. I hope he gets the Oliver Bonk Denver Barkey treatment, plays a preseason game, and goes back to juniors. And if he plays okay. more than that, great I bonus. I, I'm happy yeah. with that. But I don't think like I think that the right thing to do for him would be to send him down and tell him go dominate. I agree. You know, go dominate juniors. I, I yeah. hope we're talking about him a ton over the years as, as one of these junior players. And I'm not. And, and like I said, like, unfortunately, now, you know, if Barky was one of these types of kids who wants to try to make the team, I don't think that's happening because you lost so much time with. um, Yeah, that's the, really unfortunate. With missing all too. the rookie games and stuff like that. It's really unfortunate, too, because with how thin the Flyers are at center. If he had shown up 15 pounds heavier like he expected to be and shows up and has a pretty good camp, 
man, I think he slides in as a three C, like really. I don't know about that. Maybe four C, but he he get he maybe takes a look at cracking your roster pretty seriously just given your lack of depth at center i'll give you like and and this is where i'll give you bonk has a better shot of that than barky does because i think barky barky size comes into the equation too so that's going to be tough but yeah like and i and actually while i was scrolling through the tweets to find one out i want to shout out one more uh one more person here because we didn't really talk a ton about goaltending out of this thing but carson bjarnison had a good weekend too i want to give him props because you know not not a perfect game on Friday by any stretch, but a couple of situations where there's nothing you could do as a goalie, a couple of rebounds, you know, just stuff that's going to happen in a rookie game. He got back into the net, though, and played the first period 22 hours later after right. starting the game and played the first period, got peppered with 14 shots and stopped them all. Yep. Had a really good. That's a very that's very that's a very good impression to make. And yep, and and he was there. That's and the he'll and, part. And, and and you know what? He's another guy that I have to wonder: Are they going to try to squeeze him into a preseason game before sending I, him back? I don't think there's any real reason not to at this point, honestly. Like, so I I think Fedotov is probably going to get some real time in the preseason just to get him some exposure. Sure. I think Urson will probably play two or three games tops and and maybe he's a backup for a a fourth type of thing actually so i i'm going to correct you on that because you can actually be right about him playing three games but i don't think it's nine periods no that's valid fair enough like like, in the preseason most games are two and one or they split it in half or they they break it up in some so i'll give so i'll tell you what i'll give air i'll give arison over under arison eight periods under under okay i'm gonna give him six to seven okay six is the I, first number that popped in my head i will take uh, i'll take the line i'll take eight um well and and only because i think you want to give fedotov a proper training session you want to give him some real time him. that's yeah. one they're gonna it's look conditioning at conditioning for him well sure they're gonna look yeah. at cal peterson because he's still part of the competition and I, he's making enough money that you owe it to yourself to at least take a look at him sure then, Even though you can bury a chunk of it, like he's still three plus million on your cap. All right, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the roster again. I'm going to take a shot because they got a goalie on a professional tryout. He's the only. Oh, P- here we go. He's the only PTO of the entire camp roster. By the way, there's not another PTO. There's a couple. I think either one or two. There might be one or two amateur tryouts on PTOs. the. Yeah. Yeah, but there's not any other PTO. Um, but they picked him up right in the wake of, and we'll get to the Kolasov thing in a second. But, <laughs> yep. Uh, th- but. Etu Makaniemi is how I, okay. I'm gonna go with. That's how I'm saying it because, uh, but he's he's a goaltender who played. He's a Finnish goaltender. He actually played in San Jose in San Jose's minor league system last year. Okay, played 18 games in the AHL, eight and eight record, 3.14 goals against, 900 save percentage. Did have three shutouts there. So, so he's a dude. He's a guy. He's a guy. I think. Well, I what he's really here for is I wonder if the goal here is like. Let's put it this way. You've got a guy in camp as a goalie on an amateur tryout, and you've got a guy on a professional tryout. Right. And and you've got Cal Peterson, and you've got Carson Bjarnason, who's probably going back to juniors. So somewhere in that other mix of the other two guys beyond beyond Cal Peterson, someone's going to have to play in the AHL probably. Oh, yeah. So it might be Makanyemi. And Makanyemi's not like an old guy, by the way. He's twenty five. Okay. So it's not and like that's, he's like, and that's about that's about when you expect goalies to kind of start becoming what they are. And he played in the AHL last year, so you're, you you want him to keep working on stuff is all there. Yeah, is. and and the, I'm pretty sure the San Jose Barracuda were atrocious last year, but that's <laughs> okay. That's okay. Right. Um. All right. We honestly, want- they were probably so bad that a 900 save percentage is impressive. It could be um, actually. Yeah. That's well. Yeah, that's so, like um. Yeah. So let's. Danny while we are on the rookies, right? Or while we are on the goalies here, well, because now that there's there, there's a there's a lot further clarification on this situation because of Danny. Well, first of all, because of Danny Breer speaking, but also because we sat there last week and even said, when a rookie camp roster is out and a training camp roster is out, you'll have your answer on where this is going. We'll know whether he's on them or not, right? right. And Alexi Kolasov he's, he's not. not on the rosters, right? He okay. has chosen at this point. It is clear. Uh, obviously, he did not report for rookie camp. It is clear that he is not planning on reporting for training camp. 
Right. Um, so, Kevin, I, I know we've talked about this a lot on the show. We've kind of beaten the dead horse a lot about Kolosov and whether he wants to be here or doesn't want to be here, whether he felt included or didn't feel included. or Right. Where Now that Danny Breer has finally spoken on it, we've gotten some little chirps from other members of the organization, but now that the general manager has spoken on it, where do we stand on it today? Um, well, Danny Breer used the words, we have to move on, which kind of tells you, like, it doesn't mean necessarily they're moving on from him directly. It's more of a, well, we've got to prepare that this is potentially never going to happen. And Breer, when, when he was speaking, kind of made it, you know, like, first of all, you can sense the frustration. I, I certainly could listening to it. You can sense the frustration. And I'm just looking at this kind of like, you know, I, I ha I'm I'm kind of thinking in my head if I want to write something up on this whole situation, because I, I had said on the show, you know, once it comes out like that, then I have a reason to criticize the front office or whatever. And I still do. But I feel like this is less than the Gautier situation by a lot. But it's still going to be yeah. something. To, it's still something to monitor. Right. Like there's sure. still a lesson to be learned here, which is why, like, it, it may not be a red flag, but it's at minimum a yellow flag. Well, and the it's running, a cause for concern, the running title in my head for this is that there's no winners in this situation. You know that right now, Kolosov, as far as I know, doesn't have a place to play next year. It was either right. come over or you're sitting out the year. That's, sure. and that's the way Briere is making it sound like, right. I don't well, know and, how you're going to play. This is where and, you have a contract. And there has been some talk of the Flyers potentially tolling the contract like they did with the Ivan Fedotov contract. Sure. Now, I want to go and essentially read. pushing it off another year. Right. And they have already done that once. Well, and Briere talked. Well, so, so let, let me read some of the quotes because this will give like yeah. a lot of the context. Um, so first, because first of all, Briere was asked about like, I guess he's not there. Whatever, and they go, I guess we, he said, I guess we can still hope that he decides to show up at some point if he wants to play hockey. We hope that he changes his mind and decides to come, but it's not looking like it at this point. It is what it is. We have to move on. So then it was brought up about kind of as it came through, it was brought about like kind of what the plan was. And this is a really important part of the conversation because this kind of expresses where the player is coming from and right. why this probably happened. The way we saw it, it is probably starting the American League. Most teams around the league use their third goalie or, or fourth goalie. So he'd be in a competition with the guys we have to play some games this year. I think on his end, it's more about he wants to be guaranteed a spot in the NHL. If not, he prefers to stay over there, and that's not the way we see it. We agreed last year to loan him back for one year because he wanted to stay home. But at some point, you sign a contract. We want him here. We want him to start integrating himself to the game the way it's played here in North America, learning the language, and all of that. I guess he doesn't see it that way at the moment. So, Danny, there's your first so, Danny, so Danny listened to the last show, huh? <laughs> pretty much it's like hear... all the stuff we said right it's like listen i understand missing your mom i i get it i really i really do right now what but if brother, we... you signed a contract now what did we say following that well the team could do some stuff to try to make him feel as home as possible right like it's it look and it's got to be hard right like I i'll give kolosov this it's got to be hard to think you're the next guy up to think you're coming over to maybe dabble in some games with the at the AHL to get your feet wet potentially and then getting the call to the NHL because they don't have anybody their goaltending situation is literally has literally got a big, apart at the seams. Well, has literally got a big gaping hole at the backup position and right. you could fill that void right only to find out that if not even just not even just another guy in the system but somebody who played in the same league as you yep is going to come in and now and take flying spot. him over and first class treating him and he jumps right into the NHL, which is what you wanted. With a two-year contract extension at four times the money you're making. Sure. And th and then also to watch, you know, like similarly, I get that they gave, they gave Mishkov the five-star treatment. But you're watching another kid come over who gets the president and the GM are meeting me at the airport and his family's here and all that stuff. And it's like, yeah. okay, I can understand how that looks you know, perception wise, sure. I, I can understand how Kolosov feels now, like a little bit of a redheaded uh, stepchild. Like, that's a thing. Now, Ian LaPerriere talked about something with because he coached the team, obviously, the fa coach the Phantoms. And Briere kind of doubled down on this. So I'll read this part of it because this goes there too. Some of our players and coaches and development guys went above and beyond to help integrate him with the team. I feel bad for some of the leaders, Garrett Wilson and Louis Belpedio. These guys went out of their way to try to have him fit in. They would ask him to go to dinner, stuff like that. 
I talked to some of the guys. They all said he was fine. He was great around the rink. They liked him as a person. There didn't seem to be any issues. I believe in the leadership of those guys. Same thing with our coaches. And he, I didn't include this part in the article, but he went on to touch on Ian LaPerrier as the head coach. Jason Smith is there as an assistant. It's like, you got two guys like that who are longtime NHL career guys who know how to be a good teammate also was his point. Um, and he goes, when you hear things like that, you have to take it with a grain of salt. He had some really good people to work with around him. I get it. He might be homesick, but that's the life of a professional hockey player. You've got to adapt. And if you want to play hockey, that's just how it is. Yep. So, and again, it's like he, he kind of is hinting, not hinting at, but he's on the edge of the, you signed a contract to be here. And now, and we honored what you wanted to do the first time around where we loaned you back sure. for the first year of it. Now we need you to come over. Sorry, um, does, does Danny Briere know anything about going to a foreign country and not necessarily speaking the language the best? Sure, I, I, exactly. Like, um, and you know, I know it's a little different, right? You're in Buffalo, 20 minutes from French Canada. It's a little different, I understand. But still, I mean, he can go to the kid and be like, listen, I know, I get it. But like, you have a job. Right. And and, and, this, job. and this is the last quote I have from the thing. And there's more to this, obviously, than I included in the article, but... Uh, so first of all, at the moment, and Briere touched on this a number of times, they're not interested in a loan at all. So they're, they don't plan, like they're not going to loan him back. Elliot Friedman had something on 32 Thoughts about what the trade cost might be and that it's reportedly a second round pick, which is exactly. definitely a high cost. But at the same time, like you got, and, and there's a sense, and this is kind of where the point of the quote goes, because they don't want to loan him. They don't seem like they really want to trade him, obviously. Like they want like the idea is they signed him to a contract, they think he can play for them. Right. And and Briere was asked directly, well, then are you going to toll the contract? Like if he does play somewhere over there. And he said, No, we haven't even talked about like or not no, but it's like at the like at the moment, no, because we're not even there yet. We're still, well, no, we're not we're not there yet. We're not going to do something like that until we get to a certain point where it's like, we might have to do this. Like we still, right. we're still holding out some form of like some little hope that he might change his mind. But the trade, the trade angle of that is what's interesting because who would want to trade for some, like the, the, like the one part of it was, is that, and this is the biggest difference between the cutter Gautier one and the, the Alexei Kolosov one is, and I think we talked about this last week is that Kolosov has not said to our knowledge anyway, or to anybody's knowledge, I won't play for the Flyers. He's right. made it sound like I just want to be home again and I want to play I'm in the, the NHL. NHL. Right. Well, but then again, at this stage of the season, unless you go over and earn your spot, which is not a guarantee, who's going to give you that spot? Everybody else has filled their spots. Yeah. Every, every team in the NHL right now, the starting training camp this week has three or four guys lined up that they're like, well, two of them are going to be our goalies. I don't know which two. I probably know one but yeah. I don't have a guaranteed spot for this kid yet. And anybody who doesn't know for sure is already going to be cautious about it because it's not their problem. It's not their problem that he won't come over and play for the team that he signed a contract for. So why would they trade for the contract to, to have him tell another team? No, I don't want to come over from playing in the KHL and I want to be closer to home. Like right. it doesn't benefit anybody. So that begs the question. Do you wonder if he even wants to play in the NHL at all? And Briere said, yeah, we do wonder at this point because he doesn't show he wants to come. No. That, was the, that was the understanding last year. When we signed the contract, he asked us to loan him back for one year so he can keep developing one more year, and then he'd come over. We're here now, and he's still saying the same thing. That's part of the reason it's time for him to step up and respect the contract that he signed. Like, this is this is where you get, like... Danny Briere was not this type of player. He was not the physical type. Like no, he was, he, is... he could grind, but he wasn't like a tough guy, right? He's trying really hard to. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. He's just, he's just no. But you can just tell, like, there's a facial expression and a demeanor and a tone of voice he has where it's like, I don't know what else to do about this situation. I can only tell you so much. Right. You he can't. Won't right. You off. can't. You can't fly over there, grab the kid, and kidnap him. Like, right. I, I mean, at a certain point, if you don't want to come try to be a professional hockey player and you're not going to be a professional hockey player. Well, that's, and that's the thing. Like you got to decide what like, and that's, and that's why I keep going back to, if this is about not playing in the NHL, good luck finding an NHL. Spot it, that someone's going to give that someone's going to give to you because right. no one's ready to do that right now. It doesn't seem, nope. you know, 
And and you're and this is a guy who's still very young. Like sometimes teams do that. Like this is one of the sure. conversations. If, with, if like, you're 26 and you've been cooking in the minors for four years and you're fed up with it, it's not even that. It's a whole it's, different animal. It, it, it's Fedotov. If you're I Ivan know. Fedotov, who had a very well established KHL career, played internationally for your country, right, and was and also was, a, a top five goalie in the world in his age bracket for the exactly. last several years. And sometimes you get the benefit of the doubt, and somebody says you can play at the NHL right away. We're going to pluck you from the KHL right. and from Russia in general, and say you're going to play for us now, and we're going to give this a shot. And and it, and it's for two reasons. It's not like they didn't just do it with Fedotov because it's like, hey, we're grabbing a guy who's who was elite at the KHL right. level. It's you're also 28. Yep. We we don't do this now. We we may never know. Right. You know, we got to do this now. That's the only way that there is to do it. So we better do it. Otherwise, there's no. You know, like we're talking about a guy who's 22. Yep. You know, you you haven't had the same kind of. You don't have the same exactly. resume. You don't. You don't have the accolades. Right. You right. don't have the same resume. You don't. Out- you don't have the resume to show up and demand a spot. Right. And 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 that's why I think both sides of this conversation can be right. Do we now look at the like it? This is this hasn't resolved yet. Look, right. we could we could have said this about Fedotov years ago, and it's like, oh well, then and Fedotov. Well, maybe- for the record, he tried to come over, and the military went. Uh, actually, yeah. North Pole. Right, but you could chalk it up to organizational bad luck and and immediately pin the organizational bad luck on whoever the gm is at the time you know i i guess that would have been chuck right uh you know when they tried initially but my point being did ron draft him yes wow okay that tells you how long ivan fedotov has been cooking uh-huh. so it goes back th- but it goes back that far and like you could do that. Like you could pin that, like not, not the Fedotov one, but there's no resolution yet. Like we all thought the Fedotov thing was over with, done with. We were never going to hear about this guy ever again. And oh, then all of a sudden it's, he was in the Arctic circle, maybe being poisoned. Right. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, he's going to be here. Okay. And oh, by the way. And, oh, by the way, he's here and starting on Thursday. Right. Kind of, <laughs> but okay. There you go. It, it can happen sometimes. Right. Like, it's yeah, not impossible. But... No, it's not impossible. So right. until there's a resolution like that, it's over with. And really, I think one of the key parts of this is resolution that involves another NHL team. Like if we hear that this kid is not playing for the Flyers specifically and goes somewhere else. And and I said this last week, goes somewhere else and has a career that now looks like Sergei Bobrovsky's, let's just say. Then you got a reason to have a lot of beef, but but it's a little do but you don't like but that's what i'm saying like you're gonna see are are calgary fans mad that uh, adam fox is a good player well no i get your point but like okay well different audience the fan base doesn't let you forget you know what i mean like well i can't imagine the calgary fan base lets them forget much true but nonetheless my point my point being is that this year there's going to be conversation and people who pay attention to Cutter Gautier's stat lines and Cutter Gautier's performance. Why? Because and tickets for the January 21st game will be 11th. higher than oh, or, or, sorry, 11th. I said it was the, is it the 19th? It's sometime in mid January. I'll get it. Regardless really some Saturday in mid January, I guarantee you those prices are higher than every Saturday before and after. You know what? Just for fun. I'm going to look that up for you. I am willing to bet that it, it, 11th, January 11th. I have okay, it. and I'm willing to bet it's 10% higher than the Saturday game before and the Saturday game after. Well, now, now you've piqued my interest, so of course I'm going to go look and check for you. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. But right, because my, I, Philly, Philly loves a hate watch. But my point, but exactly my point. But you watched I, the Eagles game last night. It's a hate watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's the typical love hate relationship we have with Philly sports. <laughs> You know, exactly. yesterday, yesterday, everything's miserable. You know, today it could be great. You know, we'll, we'll sit down, we'll watch over the weekend and maybe, you know, maybe, maybe the Eagles get blown out on Sunday, but, but Matt Vay Mishkov softens the blow by scoring a goal in his preseason debut against oh, yeah. the NHL players. Wawa parking lots in the Delaware Valley were way less hospitable today than they normally are. hundred percent. Sure. <laughs> That's how it works. But my, my point being that when you have like when that situation plays out and Gautier goes to another NHL team that could directly affect two of your games in the season. Right. Yeah. Then you have a problem. Like then not even to say you have a problem. It's just, then 
yeah, that's kind of on the front office for something getting wires crossed. And it was literally, I'm not playing for you. Not, right. I don't want to be an NHLer. And Briere kind of tried to brush that off a little bit by with like, well, they don't know what it's like from the inside, except Kolosov did play for your team last, like one of your teams last year. Right. And had some, some hefty complaints about some things that, well, it, it is that all right. gets into the, he said, he said, could, so we're not going to be warranted. Could be not, but he was right. in. So if you think mm -hmm. your cult, if you think your culture across the organization is rock solid, this kid didn't seem to think so. That's true. And that's, and that's all you can go off of with that. So it's one of those things where so far the things Danny Briere have done in terms of the scouting and the guys he's gotten, I'm pretty impressed with most of the players he's brought in from a right. culture perspective, right? Whether it be Jamie Drysdale or how Bunk and Barky look or obviously all the Mitchkov stuff. Um I'm willing to give him a little tiny sliver of benefit of the doubt when it comes to dealing with prospects that aren't his guys. I get it. Obviously, obviously you don't want your organization to lose, you know, multiple high end assets, M multiple. Let's put Let's be real. Multiple top 10 guys in your system. Right. But well, when you turn one of them into a defenseman who slides into your second pair, when you, you know, obviously Kolosov is still pending at the moment, but you're right. I think the problem with what you're saying though, is that like, I, like, look, I wish that's the case too. It's, it's tough because I'm struggling to see, not struggling to see, but it's like, you you're sitting here saying they shouldn't be like oh it's hard to pin responsibility on guys that aren't his i would argue you inherit them like you, you definitely do and i'm not letting him off the hook for it but okay uh, because because it it it's not really a, a pattern yet it's still just two incidents it's two within a year though and that's what people are going to point out also and right but i think I think the public consensus, whether this ever gets confirmed or not, and I don't think it ever will be. Mm -hmm. And for the record, I have no inside knowledge here. This is pure speculation. Sure. Cutter Gauthier felt like I don't want to play for John Tortorella. And again, I don't know that. I don't know if that has ever been said. I don't believe it will ever be confirmed. That is just one person spec speculating. I want to go back to something that you said within that conversation also about it. Cause okay. you, you went to, yeah, they traded Gautier, but they got Jamie Drysdale back and he slots into your second pairing. And my response to that would be you hope because if, if the guy is a total bust from an injury perspective, then it's a problem. And then you didn't do enough to well, like, in that situation. Right. Like, and, and so this season, this season is the first real big test of trust in the front office. Because the front office says that Jamie Drysdale's healthy, mm -hmm. and now obviously if he point. gets, and if he gets hurt, obviously that is beyond that is a different conversation. But if he looks slow and he looks like he has something nagging and bothering him, then we lose some trust in the organization. Sure, and but, I, and and you're very dangerously close to that as it is. That's why I'm saying, like, you are already I, there with two of these I prospects. I don't disagree with you, but like I said, it, it feels to me like one scenario is I don't want to play for your coach, and quite frankly, I think that is a short-sighted, foolish decision that is being made by a, a kid. Well, sure, if if you're, you know, at, at so his I'm, age, I'm, yes, right. I don't I don't agree with Cutter Gauthier's decision, but I'm trying to remember that his frontal cortex isn't fully developed. So I'm trying to give him a little bit of benefit of the doubt on this one. And then the other one, a kid who also doesn't have a fully developed frontal cortex, misses his family and wants right. to be closer to home. So yes, I do think it is a problem with something. Like something's obviously not perfect in the organization because if you can smooth over a lot when you're running a high quality organization right well and it's a problem because it, it's a problem because if if you are ba if you're basing this timeline like what we've talked about for the last several weeks if you are basing this timeline of rebuilding on 
three years of Mishkov on an entry level deal before it's payday potentially and 2025 draft look at all these picks well you can't keep having prospects drop like flies that are closer to being ready because that stunts the growth that makes your team well, you know at a certain point if 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 internal feeling is concern about the ability to keep prospects the ability to keep guys happy at what point do you just start trading prospects for players and like I, I know some of that is that you're dealing from a position of weakness, like for example, Jamie Drysdale and Cutter Gauthier. Mm-hmm. But at the other side, like how many, how many Flyers prospects have we talked about over the last decade? Like they were surefire all stars that played eight games. I hear you. Well, because you never so, know. I know, I know. But right. So if if the organization is concerned, and again, I don't know that they are. Like I said, I think these are two. Fairly isolated incidents, all things considered. The timing is a bit unfortunate. But if these are in any way connected or the organization is at any way concerned about their ability to hold on to prospects, I think you have to at least start considering it. Do you know what's funny? The resolution for both situations is the same thing, though. Okay. Draft better. and uh, draft Fair better. enough. And draft better in two different senses of the word, though right draft better in, in the sense of yeah we sat here and believed all these guys are surefire talents and things like that and you couldn't forecast it properly right or or the development went awry somewhere draft and develop better i guess is that one but also draft better in terms of kind of make sure the kid wants to play for you a little bit before you just go all in with that like these you yeah, know but the, but the other method the one i'm talking about how many first round picks are the vegas golden knights made that actually played for their team i hear you I get your point. It's just one. Right. And I get your point, but you know, I'm not saying it's happening tomorrow. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying you push all your chips into the middle and say, we're trading everybody for players. But if, if guys start popping up as problems, you're going to have to figure out creative solutions because you still need to stock players. No. And I'm going to tell you one way that it also gets fixed a little bit too is you see a lot of these teams, and I hate to keep using the same example over and over again, but they're such a good example of it, like, say, Dallas, that don't need to rely on those first-year guys as much in the beginning that of let course. them kind of get their feet wet. Because um, because why? Like, Logan Stankovan does not need to play the biggest minutes right away when he comes to the NHL because, right. oh, a year earlier, Wyatt Johnson was, a, you know, Johnson was the good rookie, right? And now he's even better. So now I I'm, I'm playing him because he got better. He's worth the time. I got to play and him. Slides up the line and every up. and everybody moves up. But that becomes a guy like you focus on that guy because he looks more like a superstar than just another guy. Like right. the Flyers have too much trouble. Tr- what, the biggest trouble they have is you're trying to replace too many guys. You know, hey, at some point, you know, if Tyson Forrester can get to thirty goals or thirty five goals, like you keep waiting for that, like. You need at some point in time, those guys need to be irreplaceable so that the yes. younger guys coming in don't have to be at everything all at once, right? Sure. Like, why? And, do that's, you think, and that's the problem with rebuilding, right? Is that you have well, to get enough guys there partially producing that your young guys have time to properly develop. Part it's partially part of the problem with rebuilding, yeah. but but that's that's why you're highlighting Mishkov the way that you are, obviously, and and rightfully sure. so. Because right. I mean, it's one and, of those things that I mean he can drag your lineup further up the chart than it probably deserves to be. Well, and some, and let's put it this way. Sometimes you don't need to have like Mish, You can have the Mishkov t- style talent and it doesn't need to be anything. And this is not the same level per se, but Pittsburgh just got Rucker McGrory, right? Now you think he's, he's surpassing Sidney Crosby or Evgeny Malkin in that lineup. No, but, but he's going to get a chance to play, right? And he's yep, probably going to look better. To play with them and look better because he's playing with them. Sure. And like how much? How much money has did Sidney Crosby make Brian Rust? Yeah, sure. Or Jake. So Gensel, much or, money. Or know. Jake Gensel or Chris Kunitz or like dozens of names over the year. And Rutger McGordy is going to jump up that list as well. I'm sure if he plays with them. I get you. I hear you. And, and obviously, it's a little it's a little bit different from Mitchkov's perspective because a winger isn't quite as impactful on the game as a center can be. 
Sure. But still, um, I know it seems, talking to our listeners here, I know it seems like every conversation always comes back to Mitchkov. But it's that's going, because it does. Like, I, I mean, everything. Right. It, not even just this year. Probably for the it, a very minimum for the next three years while he's making under a million dollars. Very likely for the entire tenure of his career as a flyer because – I know we've mentioned it on the show before and we've made references to Eric Lindros and blah, 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 blah. Matt Vavishkov is the best Philadelphia Flyer likely to be. Knock on wood, he's sure. 20, you know, whatever. Right. He is likely to be the best Flyer any of us have seen in 20 plus years. Well, and and I and I think the important thing now, and this is a good transition to train, like training, training camp starting this mm-hmm. week and all that stuff. I think that what's important here is now it, it's one is to see how he looks with veterans, but I'm, I'm equally as curious as to how veterans look with him. Absolutely. Like, and if it's, it's going to very quickly become apparent that like, if you can't play with Mitch Cobb, you're not going to get as many minutes. You're not going to get as much attention. Right. It's like quite frankly, you're less likely to remain on the roster than you would be if you could play with him. Like we, what do we have at this point? We're going to do what? Two more shows before, like not next, ne- not the next show, but the show after is when we're going to do a season preview show. I think uh, something like that. Yeah. Because, because we're come the next show we do is going to come middle of the preseason. Our next show will be the 29th. Yeah. And yep. we'll do pre- middle of preseason. And then the week after the preseason's over, the season starts that Friday. We're getting ready yep. to go. And then we will be back. I am to going to, the duration of the season. I am going to kind of spoil something for two shows from now, basically, okay. because, because, because I'm sitting there watching the rookie the game on Friday. <laughs> well, but I'm sitting here watching the rookie game on Friday and seeing Mishkov play and seeing how a power play could run with him as part of it. And he's kind of quarterbacking it and things like that. And I get it. Right. And I, I, all I needed to do is watch that game and sit there and go, I, okay, they don't have like they're not playing him the next day, and I I don't need them to. I need him to be around NHLers now. He needs to play NHLers now. Yep. And the reason I'm saying this is because spoiler alert for you for two shows from now, I don't have them making the playoffs this year. I have them probably taking a bit of a step back, honestly. But okay. I sit there and I look and I go, you know how they do make the playoffs this year? That that guy is nuts. His, well, not not necessarily just him. It's that that guy is good enough to elevate a power play that was last in the league to maybe middle of the pack. So like, like if I, w- whether it's just by his presence on the ice, I don't have to touch the puck, but everybody else is going to be able to do something because you're trying to focus on me or just, he's that good and skilled to do stuff. But that's the one way I see it happening. I, I don't love the goaltending on this team. I have questions about the defense. I'm not overly convinced that there's anybody beyond Mishkov who can elevate teammates that level. Maybe Konechny can okay. sometimes. Maybe Tippett can sometimes. But I don't really sense it. There's the reason why I think they could make the playoffs and be better. Is okay. If it turns out to be one of those types of situations where Mishkov does that much to special teams that it's – Almost transforms the whole thing. Are you are you ready for maybe my spiciest take of the offseason? Oh boy. If and I think it's possible. Okay. If Mitch Cobb scores 30. Yes. Couturier scores 30. <sighs> That's not, seems- not necessarily because I think they're gonna play together. Okay. Although I think if Sean Couturier ends up on your power play, then you know, we'll see how that goes. But I think you talk about elevating game. You talk about Mitchkov is a magnet. He's going to get top matchups. He's going to get the other team's best defensive center. He's Mm -hmm. going to free things up for players in other lineup positions. I hear I think if if a line ends up with for example, Mitchkov and Forster on it with, you know, whoever is their center and, you know, wherever you want to go with that, it's not going to be connect me or I'm sorry. It's not going to be Couturier. Then it's probably, so, probably Morgan Frost. Probably. Right. So Couturier probably ends up with connect me and uh, Tippett. Uh, Tippett. Mm-hmm. If that lineup, if that lineup spent all last year playing against top lines. Now I, I know that most of the league didn't take the flyer seriously and it was a little, you know, that's not, 
when the going got tough and playoff parts points started getting real, they were getting your top line matchups. Yeah. And that happened to coincide with Sean Couturier's physical, you know, he ran out of gas a little bit. I think we all kind of saw that. Sure. Another off season, presumably relatively healthy where he gets to get a little game strength back combined with not necessarily having to play the, the tough matchup a hundred percent of the time. If there is a Sean Couturier bounce back in the works, I think this is the year. Okay. And I'm hoping for it. I'm sure. hoping for it. So let, let me see here. Cause I'm trying, not trying to process everything that you just said, but like, um, the, the core of the hot take is if Mitch oh, Bob I know where scores I... 30, Couturier scores 30. No, no, no. Okay. Hold on a minute. I, I know the point that st- stood out to me that I wanted to agree with on you is if I'm the one, if I was the one who made the lineup, that would be my top two lines to start with. That'd be your top Exactly six. the combination that you brought up. And for See, the record, probably with Couturier, Connect, Me, Tippett on top right now. Right. I would, I would do that. Yeah. And then, and then probably what I would do it, now see, I think I would do something a little different when it came to the power play, though. I think that I would take, I would bump Couturier down a peg there. I would go Frost, Tippett, Konechny, Mishkov, and Drysdale probably. Or, well, Drysdale or York. I could see York trying to run so, it. I don't know for sure, but if right. if you can if you can trust Morgan Frost to win a faceoff, then I think you can put him there. If Sean Couturier is far and away That's your best fair. faceoff guy, I think you have to take him. That's fair. I understand. Puck possession and, is so and, important on the power play. And this play. is why, for me, like I'm sitting here saying, I want to see the preseason games because, you know, and, and and the training camp scrimmages and all that stuff like that. I want to see what Sean Couturier looks like physically. Well, I don't even want to. I'm not even going that far with the Couturier part of it. Uh, this is for me saying about Mishkov because, like, oh, because I'm sitting here saying, if he improves the power play, like I'd love to sit here and tell you on day one without having seen a single thing with the with the veteran guys. They'll, you know, what was their what was their total power play goal? Like how many power play goals did the team score a year ago? Oh man, not many. Right, it wasn't many. Right, seven. <laughs> no, it was not that low. It's more I'm than that, to... but it, it did feel like very much more than that. I'm wondering if I can. <laughs> I, I wonder if I can actually find that really quick. Probably, because uh, um, I, I, because genuinely, I actually want to bring that up for a second just to okay. see if it. Um, I may have to do this the fun way, which is like to dig through some stuff, but I'll get it. Um, but my point is, is that like if I were to do by team. Right. Okay. Here we go. Team power play goals. Where is that at? Do I have to actually hit the uh, like goal by type thing on this? I don't love the NHL's stat tracker thing. Goals for by strength. There we go. Okay. So the Flyers last year at, well, <laughs> is that a five on five? Well, no, I'm saying I can break it down by five on four or five on three, which I don't even know if they had. They maybe had one five on three power play goal. So it's not a lot. Right. right? Uh, for context, by the way, so the Flyers were last. Well, by the way, they were 32nd in the league, right? They were only 12.2 percent on the power play. By, by the way, just just a hypothetical for a minute. Do you want to take a guess at who had the most five on four power play goals last year or what the total was? Not who uh, just oh, okay. what the total was, what the total was. Uh, 112. Way lower. Okay, sure. I don't know. 67 was okay. the highest. There were only there were four teams in the league that broke 60. Any Ooh, guesses? Let me guess. Okay. Best power play. Five on four goals. Okay. Right. Oilers? The Oilers were fourth. They had 60. Okay. Um, Dallas? Dallas is not one of the four. You're close, really? though. Dallas was sixth at 57. Okay. Colorado? Colorado was second, 62. Uh, the Rangers, the okay inch. Well, hang on a minute. That that actually isn't the top number. The Rangers are not in the top four of that group. They were seventh, okay. seventh at fifty six, but they were tied for second in the league with four five on three power play goals. Oh sure, okay. So this isn't total power play goals. This was just five on four. Right, 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 right. Um, I'm gonna give like one more guess here, and then I'll just have you list it off. Um, Vegas, Vegas. Vegas didn't even crack the top 10 really in five on four goals. Vegas only had 40. Uh, I'm sorry. Hang on. That's not total power play goals because I forgot four on three situations too. Of course. Um, there's did they have no? They didn't have any at six on four either. So they had only 50 total or 50. Yeah. 50 total power play goals last year. That was it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Surprising, right? No, the number one, down, right, the number, the number three team was the Carolina Hurricanes had 61 goals at five on okay. four. And wow. the number, then the number one, which will come as a shock to no, or probably will come as a shock to no one, 
is the Tampa Bay Lightning at 67. Yeah. Turns out uh, there's some good teams in this league. You couldn't name everybody. <laughs> so, okay. So here's where I was going with this. So the Flyers had w- had one five one three goal. They had, oh, that's an interesting number. Okay, so they had one five one three. They had twenty six five one four, and they had uh three at six on four. Okay. Which yeah, I know it's like a two man advantage, but it's still considered a power play goal by right because right, it's power right. play plus goalie out, which which adds up right. to and, and one I'm sorry also one four on three goal, which okay. adds up to a whopping thirty one goals. Oof. Um, uh. okay, I don't I I thought it was even lower than that honestly, so I don't want to go with like if they can double it, but I well, was in- Vegas had more than double or I'm sorry not Vegas uh, the top teams had more than double just five on four. Right. Well, like, I'm, not, I'm not trying without to... any of the other <laughs> crazy. The the flyer but, special team. But all right, so I'll, I'll, then I'll tell you what. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a team that uh, here's I'm gonna give you a, a team's number of five on four power play goals last year that I think should be like if Mishkov elevates you to this from 26 to this number. Okay. You you're making an impact, right? Okay. The number is 39. Okay. Ironic. I know it is right. Mishkov's number, but if, if Mishkov elevates you from 26, five on four goals to 39, just by like, or into the forties even would help. Just right. Producing was, on your power play. Sure. Right. But my point being with this, okay. Do you know which team that is by so the who's way? The comparable team. Is that Toronto? Cause that'd be pretty funny. And no, Toronto is one <laughs> of the good ones. Toronto <laughs> is, Toronto had 52 5 on 4, which, okay. actually, by the way, which, by the way, does not it's like a little rank. lower than their skill, you know, probably should be. Um, 39. Do know, wow. Do you want to know um, an interesting stat about Toronto, by the way, while I'm just scrolling through this thing? You know, Toronto no had a 67. What? No cups in 67. Well, no, that is a fact, but that's oh, not okay. what I'm looking at by scrolling through this. I knew that without having to scroll through this information. <laughs> do you know that Toronto had 11 goals at six on five last year? Holy smokes. Wow. Like, what a number. Um, no. So, well, when the, when the extra skater jumping on is Matthews or Marner or Nylander or Tavares, sure. like, of course, I mean, come on, man. Uh, yeah. But you know what that means also? That means you were trailing in a lot of close games. Yeah. Or delayed penalties. I didn't think about delayed penalties technically. Yes, I guess so. But right. That would, that would be the number. Fe- the number five. feels too high for that to be weighted by any more than just a couple. Right. Like, I feel like that's weighted more by you were down by a goal in the third period and needed a goalie pull. That's probably true. Um, right. I will give you a hint for the team that you are looking for, by the way, because their number should increase this year too. Their number should increase this year too. Okay. 39. Um, just for the meme, Montreal. Oh, so close. Montreal's the next team above this team. Really? At 40, at 41. Yeah. All right. Who is it? Who is it? The San Jose Sharks. Okay. And 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 obviously my point, my my point with the hint was their numbers should increase because hello, Macklin Celebrini, Will Smith. Well, my point is my talent there too. If too. the Flyers, if the Flyers had anywhere near a reasonable power play last year, even if they did only score as many goals as the Sharks. They probably easily make the playoffs. Well, any uh, well, sure. In that, based on last year, which is crazy. Well, right, we're um, talking about last year's stats, right? Right, like, right, right. I'm saying if they had an extra 15 five on four goals, that's who's making the playoffs. What I'm agreeing with you on in that case is, you know, like with last year, um, like yeah, of course, based on how the rest of the games around it went, right? Um, like listen, you could also sit there and say, like, man, you know, last year was the perfect storm of how many shorthanded goals can you score, you know, kind of thing. Um, now, like here's an interesting number for you. You know, this is a team that actually had way more success at five one three as well, but the team that finished third lowest in five one four goals probably would have had more if something hadn't happened during the year. And it's comparable because it's going to involve a player from the same draft. Say, is it uh, <laughs> to say is it uh whoever had uh other people in the Carter Hart investigation? No, 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 no. This. Oh, is, okay. I was gonna say, this well, is, the league lost several. No, no, no. This is no. This, this is this is Chicago losing Bedard mm-hmm. for a while, okay, and they okay. finished. Their, I'm saying that's why I said it was another player from the same draft. Okay. So Mishkov, I was gonna say because okay. So, okay. like, in other words, Bedard was probably a key 
I would say a key factor probably to 33 goals at five on four, one goal at five or four at five on three, two at four on three, right. another five at six on five. Like, yeah, there's factors there, but Bedard lost some time with the injury right. and I can only imagine what that number might've been like that. For all I know, that number is above. I'll give you the teams that were directly in front of Chicago really quick to lead to San Jose, Montreal territory, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and Anaheim. All right. Let's wind this back to training camp. I don't know how we got here, but uh, training camp about what Mishkov could do to infect the power play and, and, and power guys play on will, it for that matter. Power play will be one of the major things that gets worked on in training camp, right? Like that yeah, is I, always, this is when you figure out who your units are. Um, I'm curious when we'll start. I'm curious when we'll see that. So I want to bring up something with the training camp thing. I want to bring up the yeah. schedule really quick because Yeah, we'll do that and we'll get out of here. Yeah, because because obviously yeah. well, first of all, by the way, this is your this is your public service announcement with the schedule to for when when everybody should go and all that stuff like that, because it all starts Thursday. Now, Thursday, by the way, is everybody's favorite day of training camp if you do not participate on the ice. So it's everybody's okay. favorite day except for the players. That is the skate day. Okay. That is the that is the John Tortorella torture skate that is her brooks again that again. is yep that is and this is going to be this is three separate groups going on the ice starting at 8 30 in the morning and finishing up before 11 30 in the morning skate just the puke, 40, 45 minutes of pure it's i can i tell you what the thing says on the schedule because it's got a name apparently not, not like a name like i name. saw it but yeah it says th like did you see this three by eight lap 300 sh sh shuffle or shuttle yeah 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 it sounds I like just... a, that sounds like a football play call it does <laughs> sounds like a play action play um <laughs> yeah. 3x8 lap 300 shuttle <laughs> on two right <laughs> anyway then then the next two days, Friday and Saturday, and and for what it's worth, I, I can't wait to see what happens on Saturday. Like Thursday right. and Friday are usually a little lighter. Saturday's your day. Saturday's fan fest type stuff and all that stuff, and everybody's gonna show up to see this kid. Like right. everybody, oh yeah. Like training camp is gonna be mobbed the whole time. But right away, Friday and Saturday, you get scrimmages right out of the gate. Right away. Yep. You know, game -ish yes, action. Like, yes, there's practices, but there's also scrimmages. So it's it, that's awesome right off the bat. And then immediately you've got those two game days where it's going to be who's playing in the game, who's not playing in the game and for back to back days, basically. And then I am anticipating you've got Tuesdays and off day scheduled off day, which I am fully anticipating to be a cut day because the it, next off days are usually are usually cut days in camp. It feels well, the reason like. but the reason I'm also saying is because the Wednesday schedule goes from like. Uh, and you saw the schedule, so I know you, you like you know a little yeah. bit. But there's three teams for all of these first couple days. Then there's who's playing in the game and two and game two, and two non-game groups. So it's right. not one group; it's two. And then all of a sudden, you got to Wednesday, and it's team one and team two. Yep. Yeah, your your cut days are kind of baked right in. Um, and, by and, the way, I just want to mention if you have a if you have a food truck in South Jersey, just go park it outside Voorhees for two weeks because you're going to make an absolute killing this year. If if go, you, go park it outside the skate zone, if if you can, because there's a lot like there's limited parking due to the construction going on. I'm so, sure. So good luck finding a spot. I mean, <laughs> that would be you know, I mean, you know what I've seen around like this is actually a brilliant. I thought this is a brilliant idea. You know what I've seen around the sports complex sometimes after games or concerts or whatever's going on down there. Mister Softy comes. The, the guy selling whippets in the parking lot. <laughs> oh no, different. Okay, you the Mister Softy guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, but it, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I think that's genius that yeah. Mr. Softy truck camps out out there and sets up absolutely. shop as people are coming outside. And it's brilliant. Like, absolutely. Like you're, you're absolutely dead on about that. Um, So before we get out of here, is there anybody yeah. that you're interested in seeing? Honestly, I think we've done a pretty good job talking about it. I, I, I know I mentioned earlier that we probably have a pretty good, good idea of, 17 18 19 of the 20 available roster spots mm -hmm. um i'm interested to see how the back end fills out uh i'm curious to see how long jet luchenko sticks around i think i think you're right i think he's going to get a couple of preseason games um i'd like to see how long bonk and barky stick around i would bonk i would i i was about to say i'd really like to see oliver bonk get an extended look this preseason i know i mentioned it before i'd like to see him get a taste of the nhl even if they don't do that, 
I would yeah. like to see him stick with the team for a while, take the trip to Montreal, even if he doesn't play. Like, I want him to be involved. Right. Because um, I like what I've seen out of him. And I think within the next two or three years, he's going to be on your blue line uh, full time. Um, right. Beyond that, it's more so the players that we've already seen. Uh, obviously, I want to see how Mitchkov develops through kind of a full training camp. I want to see how long Spencer Gill hangs around. Um, right. And these some of the names you're bringing up are going to be guys I think go earlier just because they're mostly I, junior. I agree. Like, there's a lot of junior guys. I, what I'm curious about is I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out who the guy like. Like, I feel like last year, like there were talks about Emil Andre being like a guy who's going to linger for a while at camp. And then like it was pretty early on and there were people like kind of speculating he's going to probably make the team. And then he did right. for a little bit and then went back, obviously. Right. I, I wonder if Hunter McDonald is this year's version of Emil Andre that hangs around for longer than people think. OK, I, I, I think that might be a little aggressive right now, but I, I, I just said hangs around longer than people it. think. I'm like, I, I'm not right. saying he makes it. I'm saying no, I know. hangs I around that. long enough. And I wonder, like, I'm trying to pick a forward in that group that I think could do that. I think I wonder, the forward group is like pretty set, though. That's the tough part. Well, Mishkov's the guy, obviously, who's going to be the newcomer He's the anyway. Addition. Right. I wonder if like a Denoyer could hang for a while and linger. Yeah, I think your forward core is going to look really similar similar to last year. Obviously, you sub out Cam Atkins and you sub in Mishkov. You know, mm-hmm. in the actual lineup sheet. By the um, way, that's, by the way, speaking of players like not well not on the roster, but you went to Cam Atkinson. By the way, Danny Breer did update uh, provide a brief update on the Ryan Johansson thing that they did terminate the contract. Yep. Supposedly, he he he's under the impression that, it's done. And, and then as far as Danny is concerned, it's over. It's well, because as far as everybody knows, nothing has been done yet in terms there of a has grievance. not been a grievance filed. Right. That means it'll be out tomorrow, right? Uh, the the five minutes after you hit submit or publish or whatever you have. <laughs> Love it. Um, yep. Within five minutes. Well, the good news for that is if we do miss anything with this show, Kevin has got us on social media. Uh, yep. Make sure to follow him. He's at Kevin underscore Darso. Kevin, are you going to make it out to training camp at all? Or are you just kind of going to be following so, along? So actually, believe it or not, this is how bad it was earlier. I just looked back at the email with the training camp schedule and only read the first page, which took me to like the exact point in time where my kind of typical cutoff is before right. I'm like, not making it to every single thing and kind of limited to weekends more. Um, so I will be, yeah, I will be there on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, obviously Tuesday's an off day and I'll be there Wednesday. Um, okay. Preseason's going to be underway during that time. Now I won't be in any of like, I won't be in Washington or Montreal or anything like that, right. but you'll be in um, the home games though. Right. Um, for the most part, qu- questionable, a little questionable for the third, the first for the first one, which I don't want to miss, but it might be something out of my control. So um, trying my best to iron out a plan for that so I can make it because I'm assuming it's Mishka's first home game. Right. Um, and I really would, obviously, I want to be there for that. Um, right. Otherwise, no. After that, I don't really have any bad, like, anything, anything that would get in the way. Um, okay. They do have another... Actually, okay, so cool. Um, well, we'll discuss more about that later, obviously, yeah. and stuff like that and, and things like that. So, yeah, but for the first handful of days, I'm going to be there. So I'm going. Okay, so first... you will be there. Good. Yes, I'm going okay. to first. I'm going starting with that crazy skate. And then uh, where, where, if... Torts, where Torts gets to come up afterwards and laugh, basically laugh about it. Like, yeah, did you see what I just did? I'm all had them all do. <laughs> see how many guys were puking? Um, but he'll tell, he'll, right. he'll tell us about the guy who came close to puking himself like, and say, like, that guy's awesome. I love yep. that guy. <laughs> well, if you are at training camp, uh, you know, tweet Kevin. Let him know you're there. Maybe, you know, say hi. Take a picture. Uh, if not, make sure to follow him along just to get all your, your training camp updates. Like I said, it is at Kevin underscore. Uh, yeah. Kevin underscore Darso. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, make sure you're also following the show. We're at YWT Podcast. You can find us everywhere you find your podcast, including sportstalkphilly.com, podcast, iTunes, everywhere. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, the next time we talk, we will be – will we already have preseason games? Yeah, absolutely. Man. You said the 29th. That's going to be four preseason games in. The next time we talk, we will have Philadelphia Flyers preseason games to review. My goodness, that's exciting. Believe it or not half the preseason's over by that point if you can believe it and we will be here to talk about the first half preview the second half get gearing up for the season preview until then stick with us follow us on social media we'll see you